What's going on legends? Welcome back to the channel and we have an awesome video for you today. Uh, this is going to be another episode of the gameplay review series that I'm doing and this one was sent in by Zach over on Discord. Um, I must admit I watched the first couple seconds of this video and uh, I think you guys are going to be in for an absolute treat with this one. It's a console blight main and uh, you know this this to me really does kind of demonstrate just how capable blight is on console of doing the same flicks that we do on PC. So I'm really excited to see how you know kind of kind of how this game goes. Wrecker's Yard, honestly, it's a pretty good map. It's not a bad map for Blight at all. And in fact, I mean, wait, hold on. Looks like they were trying to... Okay, the survivors may have been trying to send them to Colburn as well, man. Great that we went here instead. Um, but yeah, you know, generally speaking, Autohaven is a really, really good, uh, you know, kind of map set for Blight. It's not the easiest, you know, when, when you're first starting off with Blight, it can be a kind of, you know, a little bit tricky because some objects can be um, a little bit more slippery, especially the cars and the shack. But uh, but once you start to uh, kind of like build up that memory of like which ones you can use and which ones you slide around, it's a really, really fun and really effective map for Blight. So it looks like, um, it looks like add-on and perk-wise, we have a pretty interesting selection. I'm a big fan of what I'm seeing, actually. Uh, you know, my classic Shadowborn Barbecue, you know, my favorite, uh, you know, duo set of perks in the game. It's what I typically run. Uh, combined with Agitation and Lethal Pursuer. So what I can definitely tell with this build already, um, it's going to be a slightly more advanced Blight player, definitely going for more of a uh, kind of like a casual game feel type, uh, you know, type build. Uh, no slowdown, nothing crazy. You know, Agitation just giving you that kind of like, you know, nice quality of life to get to the hooks quicker. Barbecue for the infinite, the, uh, the, the, uh, the information mid-game. Shadowborn just because it's the best perk in the game. And then of course Lethal Pursuer, which combined with these add-ons by the looks of it, double speed. So that is the ring and the crow. Um, the nice thing about that is that you see the survivors as soon as you spawn in. And because of that extra speed, you can get over to them and get a hit within the first, you know, four to five seconds. So definitely curious to see how this one goes. Oh, there's the Steve so close and in fact that was a really really uh you know nice sharp 90 turn it looks like steve was maybe a little bit ahead of you with that spin but not bad at all we are going to be ditching shack right now towards a short side jungle gym if i'm not mistaken yeah dude i mean yeah not mistaken short side jungle gym and perfectly played i must admit that's got to be some high console sensitivity because that turn there that like you know instant 90 almost uh, really impressive very very good accuracy on this blight player you know, kind of like sliding towards the end, catching with the window, and that's going to be a guaranteed shot right there. We typically call that the death window because on a short side jungle gym, there's very little a survivor can do uh, to, you know, kind of kind of escape a hit from Blight. Going for a bit of a mind game. Looks like he may have been committing to that W play there. Great job, honestly. You know, kind of like being in that situation, uh, holding, uh, you know, kind of like holding your ground, using that 1.25 seconds of slam duration. Uh, really nice play, honestly. So far, it's been pretty clean. That first hit on Steve, you know, kind of unfortunately missed. But even then, that's not bad at all. You know, we're kind of like 20 seconds into the game. And, uh, you know, we already have... Oh, actually. Okay, a couple things to talk about here. There's actually an interesting bug that exists here because the collision on this fun bus is so garbage. Like, it is the worst collision you've ever seen. Um, with double speed, it's actually possible to get on top of the bus from certain angles. Uh, it's really tricky, but that's why you kind of see us do this jump here. What I can recommend, and, or, you know, like, like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, is because the collision, uh, you know, like, 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 especially after the Hellraiser chapter got released, is so kind of like finicky and, and uh, wide and sensitive. I wouldn't recommend going through Fun Bus, especially from this, like, front angle, you know? It's most of the time going to almost guarantee um you know blight kind of getting stuck or doing something like this and you're gonna waste a couple rushes to try and get through there so what i then noticed here elodie with a sprint burst right i kind of noticed that as she was coming off the gen she was running running you know like, like very very quickly and so typically speaking with blight as i kind of you know uh, uh went across on my guide is the survivors that use uh you know distance based exhaustion perks so things like sprint burst things like live things like smash hits um you don't want to hit them with blight's weapon uh, until you are sure that they've gone back down to the normal 100% movement speed, right? Because as you see here, we do just about miss it because she is still going quicker. I think the uh, the nice thing to keep in mind is that a survivor that is, uh, you know, currently uh, sprinting off or using lithe or something, um, when they're at that maximum kind of like peak uh, speed, um, they are moving quicker than your swing allows you to catch up with, right? Not a bad attempt. And keep in mind, you did have one more rush there. So of course you could have used that. But again, I, I, I'm totally totally uh you know to blame for doing that as well it's a common mistake you know sometimes you don't realize they've got the perks in time and you just you just got to work with what you've got you know i don't I, I do not blame them at all for that 
Oh no, dude. And the, uh, the fatigue cancel hit as well. So there's a lot to talk about in this video already, man. We're like a minute in. There's a lot to go over. So uh, the fatigue cancel hit is sadly basically what happens here. So it's when you, um, on, on, on console, I guess, it's when you hit your, your left and right trigger um, too quickly together. And this is a bug that has been in the game since, uh, you know, basically since Blight's release. Um, it's unfortunate it doesn't happen all the time, but, but, but basically what will happen, it will force you into fatigue. And although the swing will still count, technically it has no kind of velocity going forwards. So that's why we missed that hit because the lunge kind of got like, uh, you know, removed. Kind of unfortunate, but still, still it looks like uh, we are going, uh, we are, we are still chasing someone. The option between the Steve and the Yui looks like we're going for the, uh, for the Yui instead. Interesting decision there. Oh, and some unfortunate, uh, also aim, uh, mishaps there as well. In that situation, I think it would have been better to go for the Steve since he is already injured. He would have been a better choice. But again, it's early game, man. One gen's dumb. Got to see what kind of pressure we can bring back. Go for a hit there. She did kind of, you know, uh, she did definitely eat up quite a lot of time uh, around that rock. That was very well played by the Yui. Using perfect, dude, perfect use of your slam duration there. 1.25 seconds, even going slightly into the few frames of fatigue there. Nice job. And a great 90 around the corner as well. So applying a lot of pressure right now. If you had Ruin, that gem will be regressing. It'd go back to nothing by the time another survivor gets on it. Also, eyes on the Yui. And actually, it looks like the third survivor um, over on the other side. So that's possibly the Yui and the Yunjin. Is that going to be a hug tech? Hug tech 90. Oh, perfect. Perfect play. Plus, you know, by extension, the game didn't even want to refund that one, man. So, yeah, absolute props to that one. Perfect play. So, again, keep in mind in this situation, you know which gens have been worked on. Also, uh, Steve is just healed up. And assuming that he doesn't have self-care, um, he's probably going to be with those other survivors. So, that means that we basically have kind of tracking understanding of the entire team right now. Using slam duration perfectly. Oh, man, that's incredible. It's what I'm always trying to talk about. You know, like, slam duration is so kind of vital to making sure that you have that time to find the survivor. You know, you 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 really do not want to be rushing. It's kind of funny, right? Like, the fastest killer in the game, the one that, like, pinballs around like crazy, um, is also the one you've got to be the most patient with because you have such insane speed. You really don't need to be rushing all the time. So that kind of, like, example there, again, going slightly into the few frames of fatigue, go for that 90 around the corner, straight into the back of Scoops Ahoy Steve's, uh, you know, skull right there, man. Perfect shot. That was amazingly well played. Faking the break as well. That was good. Okay. Now, it doesn't look like we can cancel the save, but we can, you know, uh, apply a little bit of pressure to that unhook situation. Oh, I think she's trying to force some BT there, man, but not quite getting there. I think uh, LED's not the most, uh, you know, pro oh, I was going to say not the most professional bottle blocker, but she does try her best and she does succeed in that situation. Are we going to go for the, um, for the LED? I'm assuming we are. Yep, looks like we're going back for the LED. Faking around the corner. She doesn't drop a pallet. Slight little bit of a hiccup there where we uh, kind of respect the pallet. And then down. The only real critique I can give in that situation, and again, I understand respecting pallets, is that like in that situation where it's God pallet, you want it to be thrown, right? You can't lose in either situation. Either it gets thrown on your head and you eat the pallet, boom, it's gone, fantastic. Uh, four gens remaining as well, which would be awesome. Um, or they don't drop it and you just run around the corner and get the hit either way, right? Like, 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 like either possible option is going to be great for the killer. Looks so like we are going to commit to actually kicking that gen now. Probably about like, you know, 60% or so, which is good. Going to leave us slugged as well, which is interesting. We did see the Steve as well around the corner. He's going to drop the pallet. Looks like we're not on pallet side actually. And he is down. Perfect. So that was uh, a very good use of, uh, you know, trying to trying to do a very, very quick bump on the first one. And then using your second one to instantly go back into a, to, to, you know, deal that damage. Getting the LED down as well. But is that Soul Guard? No way. Okay. It looks like these, uh, these survivors are pretty prepared for the situation now. Going around the corner. Oh, so close to Pocos as well. So close. Um, was there anything you could have done better in that situation? I saw you try to like, you know, you you you, you sort of try to like curve around the corner and then like go back in there. I think if you maybe committed more to like using one more bounce kind of like whilst you were inside that kind of like trash tile in the middle, uh, maybe off of the tires or something, that would have guaranteed a hit. But either way, we're only like, what, seven seconds out. So it's not a massive deal. Also, great, uh, you know, great looking charms on your hook as well. <laughs> All three survivors got tracking of the entire team. That's fantastic. Another 90. The survivors just can't get away from this rock. I swear, man. They love it. <laughs> Looks like, oh, interesting. I would have swung as well, man, honestly. <laughs> so we do have the ungen here. Let's see if we can do some interesting shag plays. Oh, dude, that was... Oh, <laughs> oh this is awesome. Great play there. Round the corner, instant 90 flick. 
great job, man, honestly. I think it was definitely a bit of a gamble, admittedly, to try and go for that flick because a good survivor is not going to be standing and camping the pallet, right? And again, we're kind of assuming that because this, uh, you know, like, like the, yeah, the title of the video says high MMR, I would kind of go into this game assuming the survivors know where they should and shouldn't be, right? So in that situation, I'm not sure if it would have been the perfect play. I mean, you know, like, 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 like Hero totally played out. But I think against like the average good survivor, they're probably not going to be camping the pallet. They're probably going to be more towards the middle where they can try and get like a fast off, you know, kind of like through the window, or they're just going to head straight out back out the door. But in this situation, again, man, clean, clean 90 around the corner. Bit of a mind game as well, hiding the red stain. It looks like she might just be trying to ditch though. Steve is going to be the next target, potentially. He is, oh, okay, this is an unfortunate tile though. I mean, yeah, a bit of a Pluto attack there as well. There's not a lot you can do around those ones, especially considering that if we think about bump logic right now, there's not really a whole lot to work with. You know, if we look over here, we kind of have like the, the, the corner of this building to work with, not very good. We also have like, I mean, the generator is not too bad, but if you're inside the middle of that tile, you can't reach the generator. If you can reach the um, the hill, maybe the side of it, again, from this angle, it might have collision on the corners, but the, major the, uh, the, the vast majority of the hill is going to be slippery. Um, I don't really blame you for, uh, for kind of getting stuck there. It's a really hard tile to try and get out of. Going for the F the kick again. They really want that gen done, man. I think that the, uh, the survivors know that if they get that central gen done, they're going to bring back some really, really good pressure here. And yep, he knows it, man. Instant flick there as well. Again, just as we uh, spoke about before, I think that was a little bit risky because you could have gone back into fatigue cancel, but it did work out. Potentially a hug tech coming up. Let's see. And he continues holding W. I mean, you know, if, if, if you're not, like, like, like the main thing I try and recommend, because uh, obviously things have changed with the hug tech, um, there is the technique of now looking down, so you, you can kind of ignore, like, the primary collision uh, detection of most objects, is that I wouldn't recommend looking entirely down. So you don't need to look all the way to the floor to hug something, and the problem with looking all the way to the floor is that this Blight player uh, would not have seen the Steve kind of, like, standing there in the middle, right? So I think looking just far enough down, but then being able to see over the top of the truck was the perfect play. Looks like we are going to go for the pickup here. I think, uh, you know, again, the video is 720p. I believe we're three hooks in currently. So three hooks for three gens. Not fantastic, but I think we can bring it back pretty quickly. Plus, Yunjin injured as well. We can probably get some really good pressure going back here. And Pala is another short wall jungle gym. Not bad RNG either. This is pretty great RNG for Blight. And they're, they're still trying to pressure that gem, man. Going back for another kick, potentially. Another kick, man. Let's go. All the way back, and she has nothing to work with here. Sadly, I think the fact that you're using double speed, I honestly reckon from here, let's see. Yeah, from here, what would have been the, the, the absolute, like, you know, best possible outcome is that with double speed and that second stack, you would have easily been able to make it over to that object there, right? So assuming that every survivor, especially high MMR, you know, it just seems to be the case that everybody and their dog has dead hard. Um, all you got to do is just rush through this from that gen, rush all the way to this corner, you know, try and try and collide with her a little bit so it makes it look like you might go for a hit. Um, and then as soon as she's used it, she's out in the open, that's when you go for the hit. I think swinging here, again, it's something that, you know, we always do. Um, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, everyone does this. Uh, you know, e e even I do this. I totally forget to, uh, you know, bait a dead hard sometimes. But um, but yeah, like 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 idealistically, you always want to try and bait it, and I think that object there would have been perfect. I think the the, the locker may have been a little bit too close. She going for the unhook. Interesting. They're they're very altruistic, man. They are extremely, extremely quick on those unhooks, man. Great altruism. Honestly, like really really good job from both uh you know both sides so far. Not okay. Fair play. I must admit that may have been kind of intentional, non-intentional going into fatigue there. It was better to like try not to hit that one though, just in case, you know, you don't want to like try and go for a swing and then it turns out they have like, you know, they, they have dead hard or they're just going to avoid you or something. It may have been better to try and risk it, but in that situation, I kind of understand because he doesn't want to waste a lot of time and then he wants to go back for the, uh, for the pickup on the, uh, the engine on the floor. Or faking it. Oh! I take it back. Absolutely fantastic play. The fake back to the pickup. He then jumps back out to try and get the gen done. And boom, he's down as well. Two people slugged. Well, two gens remaining. You are looking like you're in a bit of a tough situation right now. 
I'm not entirely sure what the best game plan is right now. I think what may, like, like maybe what, what what I would do in this situation is I'll try to prioritize at least one of those survivors being down in the basement, right? As soon as they're down in the basement, you can maybe like, you know, try and uh, start a patrol, especially with that gen in the center. They're trying to get done over a hug tech around the side. I don't think there's a survivor there. I think I th I'm, I'm pretty sure they may have realized that as well. I don't think there was a survivor on that side. Gunjin has just been hooked. I was going to say, she's probably not a bad option right now. If you want to try and regain some pressure... Yep, there's the dead heart. She drops the pallet as well. This is tough. One gen remaining. It's going to be a really tough one to recover from. It's, it's still entirely possible, and you played this very well so far. But I guess this is, uh, you know, kind of a good example of how tricky some of these games could be at high MMR with, uh, you know, kind of, kind of without using gen regression, you know? One survivor at the game, though. Looks like Steve is gone, which is fantastic. Ideally, we want to get a second one. Trying a bit of a 180 flick around the corner. Not quite getting it because she, uh, you know, continues running. Kind of makes sense. Uh, you know, well played from the, uh, from the Yui there. And the last gen. Oh, dude. okay. That that is the worst thing to hear, man. That was what like two to three gens in the period of like a minute. That is uh, that is kind of tough, man. We still have the Yunjin injured, though. Keep in mind, we can maybe still bring this back. One hit. Looks like she might be taking you back towards. Oh, you can do some really cool stuff here. Okay, so. Yeah, definitely panicked there for sure. I think what you could have done in the situation, and again, I understand, you know, from a from a, a you know like a like a general killer's perspective, you're kind of in this situation, and you're like, you know, shit, like like like, like what exactly do I do? Um, you know, like 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 you're kind of panicking. All the uh, the gens are done. Survivors are you know healing up or something. They're they're you know maybe working on the doors already. You do start to need to try and get in this mindset of trying to just uh, pull whatever you can back. So specifically in this situation, what you could have done is that kind of like, imagine like the object is like this, right? So it's kind of like that. We have a pallet here and, or oh, I'm, I'm going to be drawing on the top of the screen. I apologize. I should have moved this slightly more towards the middle, admittedly. Um, this one's a little bit of like a trash tile. So it's kind of like, you know, this, but this object here, this is the car, right? So this one here is fantastic. This is my very, very bad attempt at drawing a car. I'm pretty sure it's going to become like a staple of this series. Just me attempting to draw objects with, uh, you know, whatever this tool here is, man. Um, but yeah, so what you could have done is keep in mind that as Blight here, if you try and like hug tech around this, you're just going to connect with this. There's not really any reasonable way, especially based on bump logic, you can kind of get from here all the way around the corner to then hit an object kind of up here, which again, I probably could have drawn. But <laughs> um, but the idea is that like, uh, you know, going this way, especially since she's kind of like over here, is not really going to be the option. I think the best thing you could have done is try and like, um, you know, fake the direction going over there. Maybe like look to the right for a split second, make her think you're going in that direction, make her walk over towards the left, kind of zone her away from it, and then go for a hug tech this way. The idea with this one is you're always facing this direction as per, you know, as usual with a hug tech. You then go around the left, and then at this point, you then skim kind of backwards, right? You're kind of like looking in this direction now. You then hug tech, you go all the way around, you kind of like skim whilst looking that way. And then very, very quickly, as you kind of like hug around the side, try and then go for a bit of a flick around that direction, right? That may have been an option, especially since you do have, uh, you know, double speed. That may have been a little bit difficult to work with, but at the same time, I kind of feel like that may have been the only option of downing that survivor right there. Yeah, because see, getting stuck here, not an easy place to be in. I can see, you know, the other shaking of the head, definitely, definitely a tough situation to be in. I think, like, you know, that is the other thing about Blight is a lot of situations like that. You have to be able to so quickly kind of, like, look around your surroundings and figure out, like, like what kind of possible options you have, you know? Go for a swing as well. Definitely some panic going in here, but not a bad attempt. She could have been there. I think a hug tech around from the pallet side could have also, uh, you know, definitely worked there. Is she going to make it, though? Find a couple, uh, trying a couple mind games, and they actually work pretty well. Yeah, definitely. So, an interesting mind game. I guess I'm kind of going on a bit of a tangent here, but an interesting mind game you can do around objects like that. Let's just say it's the same thing again, where you have, like, this object and then the pallet, right? Um, this is, you know, unimportant. But if you're running a survivor around, uh, you know, kind of, like, generally speaking, this kind of, like, object, or any object in the game, really, even, like, a, uh, you know, a, a rock or something, you know, like, the kind of things you find on um, Shelter Woods, right? Where you have, like, a rock here, very decent-looking rock, one there, and then you have, like, the pallet in between, right? So what you can do is, 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 is uh, say the pallet's really thrown and you're trying to stop the survivor from jumping over it. If you're running in this direction, just following the survivor and the survivor's like here, they're going to be waiting until the last second and decide whether to vault or to fake it, right? What they're kind of expecting and hoping you're going to do is you're going to get here. You're going to hope and pray that they're going to vault. You're then going to turn back around and, you know, wouldn't you know, the survivor has not vaulted and now you're stuck in the same position again. However, a little pro tip that you can do is if you're in this situation, get to about here, and then with your camera very quickly, basically do that, right? 
turn around just kind of turn 180 whilst you know still moving in that direction you know still kind of like 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 a you know moonwalk walk backwards in that situation but turn around very quickly and then turn back again that slight 180 you would be so surprised catches more often than not every single survivor because they're, they're, they're kind of walking around they're waiting for that little bit of information and as soon as they see you turn around or at least the red stain uh disappears they assume that you've uh you know run around so of course they're not going to jump because they're you know like, like like why would they they're going to be jumping into the killer's uh you know arms basically so then at that point you just continue running they're already like probably over here and boom that's practically a guaranteed shot working on the okay not working on the door so far it must have been the other one the fact that they've healed up means that they're potentially working on the door you know I, I mean you know by this point of the game one of them's maybe got the door like 99 i'm not entirely sure but they have reset which is worth keeping in mind i must admit so far though you played this really really well good gen defense in the middle i think maybe going for that shack play oh that's so unfortunate maybe some communications going on i'm not entirely sure but that was really unfortunate um, but yeah, I think, um, I think you know, in, in hindsight, maybe going for like a basement play, trying to, uh, you know, uh, obtain some pressure that way. Are we going to land that? No way. No way I was going to say that would be insane. That'd be such a good shot. Um, yeah, going for like a basement play, trying to like secure the pressure in the middle whilst also defending that gen would have maybe been the way that I would have played that. Yeah, the door's 99. Great, great job, honestly. Really, really fun game. I mean, you know, the survivors played very, very well. They pressured the gens great. Uh, they kind of knew which order to work on as well, which, uh, you know, if, if you've got a swift um, or, you know, just like generally good survivors that know which uh, generators to get out of the way first, um, it can be a really, really tricky situation uh, for, for not only Blight, but most killers in the game. Even my game around the side looks like she may have uh, held the W in that situation, man. Not a lot you can do. They've opened the door. I'm assuming that's basically GG with a three-man escape. Let's see. We could bring it back. Yeah, the, oh, wait, hold on. Go for the one hit there. You have double speed. Let's see. Oh, that's unfortunate. You know, including the dead hard that would have made it hard. Uh, wait, the dead hard would have made it more difficult. Makes sense. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think here, going for the rush around the corner, I understand you kind of wanted to like curve into the door frame, right? Maybe you could have like, you know, curved into the door frame. That would have been her like panicking with the dead hard. And as soon as she's finished that animation, you then go for the slap down, you know? I think the problem here, though, was kind of like rushing in the situation you did, and also great slap through the window. I think rushing, kind of, kind of, you know, using that rush because your 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 original rush was going in like that direction, right? It was really, you know, quite stark opposite in the opposite direction. So I think then trying to curve that one towards the door is not really going to give you the angle because the door is going to be kind of like you know over here or something you're just going to end up like kind of like hitting the corner of it i think it would have been better and again i understand there's definitely some panic going on in this situation uh would have been better to wait until this point and i actually wouldn't have aimed for this one at all i would have aimed for this one over here i think that one over there um would have kind of intersected where uh young jim was running and then she has two options she either tries to dead hard through you or through to the exit gate which would have been an easy down you just you know kind of like i said follow through the animation um or b she runs back towards fun bus and again that kind of gives you some time to uh, go into fatigue maybe chase her as an m1 killer or try and go for another flick inside fun bus still getting hit there though still getting hit good stuff good stuff I, I, you know, at, at, at this point of the game, I can only assume that, uh, you know, Yubi has found the hatch by now. I'm definitely going to try and, uh, you know, think back and go in hindsight and think of things you could have improved on. But I must admit, kind of, you know, throughout the game, that was a really, really impressive, uh, you know, showcase of what console play is truly capable of. Um, there were some really good flicks around there, some really good use of the tiles, you know, especially the, uh, the short wall jungle gems and the shack um you know some really clean 90s and honestly some so you know i i would argue so far some of the best kind of like um you know camera movement speed and also uh slam duration kind of like um uh what's the best word slam duration um slam duration understanding i guess uh that i've seen uh you know from from, from especially a console player uh you know like like a like a console blight player in a long time um so you know in general i think like main things to improve upon uh, i think your slam duration was fantastic i think your flicks are really really good i think your accuracy when turning is really really nice i think generally speaking just a little bit more pressure and also i think you were maybe focused in on one part of the map for too long which would have been fine if you could kind of keep pressure there right if we were thinking about the whole map and again we can only assume that like maybe they were on comms maybe they weren't on comms we don't know but you know if, if, if we're talking about the shack and that gem was like kind of like here right we had the hill over here and and, uh, you know, the gem was there. Now, the other three survivors, uh, you know, two after the, the you know, the uh, the uh, the first one got killed, obviously, are going to be working, like, here, 
and here and uh, you know here and uh, you know it's only one of them that has to go to the uh, to the middle of the uh, the uh, the game and constantly keep pressure on this gen and you're just gonna stay there and allow the other survivors to just you know mash with those gens which is basically what happened but I think if you are gonna like you know absolutely fortify and defend a spot like that best thing you can do is try and you know hook someone in the basement especially in a map like you know like 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 a wrecker's yard that guarantees a basement spawn um you know like like right in the middle of the map because it doesn't have a main building um but yeah like you know if, if you did hook someone in the basement um you could have then defended it uh survivors would have then had to have like uh potentially risked their gen progress on the outside of the map to come and go for the save uh you could you you, you then could have also used that time whilst they're wasting that 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 kind of like valuable uh gen progress time to then go and pressure the other gens and then go and you know kind of like down or slug or hook survivors in the other corner of the map and constantly kind of have a you know a, a situation where the survivors don't really know what to do they're kind of constantly running across the map and trying to find out the next uh, game plan but honestly kind of overall really really awesome game uh you know again everyone that's watching this uh, you know this video i understand i've probably been rambling a little bit man but i love reviewing these games if you guys enjoyed the video i definitely recommend joining the discord server uh, if you want to discuss anything you know if you want to like uh you know send any submissions through for you know more reviews feel free man i'm always there um you know leave a like and comment all that stuff man subscribe because we've got loads more videos coming out soon uh and yeah guys much love i'll catch you all in the next one